Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. I'm Nick McDaniel. He's my Iron Fancher. How hell are you, buddy? Man, man, I love that music. I We have got to have not only the best wrestling content, but the best music of any wrestling podcast I've ever heard, Nick. Hmm. Dude, we love it, dude. And it's it's because we know a guy. Yeah, we right? know, That's a guy. A, know a guy. So, Your um, son-in-law. Yeah, man. Punk Flesh Music, man. Check them out. Social media. They're actually, by the way, you can listen to their stuff on Spotify and stuff, all that good stuff as well. Mm. So kudos, man. Uh, but look, speaking of subscribing and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know where you should be subscribing, Myron? Where is that, Nick? On YouTube, man. YouTube.com, at Tapped Out Pod, of course, is the handle there. But of course, you know, look, you can like the page, subscribe to the page, turn the notifications on so you don't miss everything. Because, you know, your boy likes to just randomly drop things at odd yep. times. We have, a, yes, there's a scheduled time every week. But if I'm up, I'm early on a, a Tuesdays or Thursday morning. Sometimes I'll just drop the show early. So that notification will be there. And, of course, Patreon.com as well. You get uh, behind the stuff, you know, early stuff. You get stuff, uh, exclusive stuff, all that cool stuff, just like becoming a member on YouTube. So make sure you're following, subscribing somewhere, anywhere to the channel and that way you're not missing anything anytime any place um because listen i i told you a little bit you, uh, last week i kept you in the dark but this week i kind of teased something that's coming that i've been working behind the scenes yeah. with and i'm really really Always. excited for it so uh the scenes. Yeah, now do you ever I, sleep all the way to seven o'clock uh later than that i was actually do I, I try to work on my ipad and my phone and stuff i'm literally doing show notes last night on my phone I try doing google docs on your phone on your iPhone. i, I do, do i do my my on the on the uh on the move notes on my phone and then uh send the short things to my computer and work on them yeah and that's just then that's, i upload them to you yeah but yeah man so it's look there's a new th- content coming i think we're going to record it next week um it will so I, I'm debating putting it behind the paywall. I think the conversation with the um, – I'm still going to call it talent right now because I don't want to give out the name yet until we kind of work out the details. Talent. Uh, the talent that will be involved. Uh, it is a – it's a it's a, it's a wrestling talent. It's a, And by the way, it's on a nationally televised show. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited to say the least. So uh, – which is why we're even mentioning it here, right? It's not – it's not – but anyway – so it'd be cool. much better if you did it with somebody that has talent and somebody without talent. Right. It's just not some fans giving their opinion yet. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, but look, hey, before we get started, we do want to talk about something new that we've kind of hinted at for a couple weeks. Uh, and that is our partnership, the show brought to you by Dubby, Dubby Energy Drinks. Uh, so it is a new thing that we're into. Um, look, a lot of people are like, Hey, how did you get involved with an energy drink? Right. Myron, that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Look, w has been around since 2021. Uh, they've, they kind of gear their market and it's kind of funny. They gear their market towards streamers like us, content creators yes. like us, yeah. gamers, which is kind of like yeah. us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, my thing was like, look, wrestlers and gamers kind of have that same, they need that constant, constant energy. Right. Yep. So that's kind of why we said, Hey, look wrestlers will love this and here's why mm-hmm. zero sugars no yep. artificial flavors or dice it no secret formulas hidden around no hidden ingredients mm-hmm. it is gluten free which i kind of thought was really cool yep. um and by the way it's all unique flavors so you're not buying some generic thing in a can or whatever they're mm-hmm. you're gonna their taste is their taste and you're not gonna taste it anywhere else mm-hmm. by the way the other thing my biggest knock on regular energy drinks is when you go into the convenience yep. store those those things are pricey yeah super high Yep. If you do the powder, by the way, makes it travel easier because mm-hmm. you can get you a shaker. Just put some, yep. take some bottles of water with you, whatever. Put it in there, shake it up, boom. It comes out to like a dollar or less per drink. Yeah. Cheaper than going by, like I said, the convenience store, oh. going by Starbucks, all that stuff. And guess what, Myron? What? Made in the USA. That's a big oh, thing. Yeah. You know, we absolutely oh, yeah. love that. And so what we're telling you to do, check them out over at w, w.gg. Um, you'll see them obviously everywhere on social media as well. Go over there, use the promo code. There you see it on the screen. Tapped out pod, shocking, right? And get ten yep. percent off of your order. So again, w dot gg w energy drinks. And by the way, Myron, not just energy drink, hydration sticks, yep. hydration, all that cool stuff. So oh, yeah. covers look the wrestling people that we're reaching out to, and of mm-hmm. course the diehard gamers who yeah. we absolutely oh, love. Yeah, you know my son's a bartender, and he loves it because. He gets our promo code, so he takes money off there, and 
he gets a drink for a dollar instead of having to stop on the way to work and get a Red Bull because you know he's up late every night, ten in bar. Comes home, he has to get up and do something the next day. He just mixes a W up at the house, pays like a dollar for it instead of a Red Bull or a cup of big cup of coffee at Starbucks, and he's on his way. You can't beat that. And by the way, if you're look, if you're just a lock and loaded, I got to have it in my can. They have canned stuff too. You can buy, you know, buy them by packs of cans too. And uh, some people just are that way. They prefer their can, and you know what? That's fine. That's an option for you as well. So check them out again, and you don't forget use that promo code tapped out pod save 10 percent on your order yep look a lot of the stuff out of the way myron let's dive right into this week uh mailbag episode we, the yep. question started so we got some last week and so we i was trying to catch up too. Yeah. i got i got we got one really special question this week so um i guess i'll read the question since i'm the the wrestling postmaster general uh the tur- i guess the uh ring post master general you might say yeah. <laughs> um kevin from st paul minnesota N- i've never been that far north have you nick not yet no nope, no nope, never been that f- of course you're going on another one of those giant trek vacations so who yeah. knows um kevin wants to know why do you think so many people were angry about drew losing at clash at the castle and what were your thoughts on the ple as a whole well I thought it was terrific. I love a good five or six match pay-per-view like that because quantity over quality, I said quality over quantity. Sorry. I got that backwards. That's what I thought about it. I enjoy it. Um, it was good. Uh, it was not their best. It wasn't their best outing they've had in a while. Um, by the way, I'm not talking like I'll get to the Drew McIntyre thing in a second, but as far as just across the board, um, let's kind of go in order, out of order, call it what you will. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the AJ ending, the Cody no. AJ ending. Um, now did it leave the door open for something down the road? Sure. But, uh, I'm going to scream that I need an explanation. Yeah. Like on SmackDown, I need an answer. It's almost, an, I mean, we don't have any plans Friday night. I don't think, uh, but it's pro- it's almost enough to make me stay home. Friday just to watch wrestling on TV instead of going to see. Now I'll probably wind up going to see a live show, but this is intriguing to see what's going to happen on SmackDown this Friday night. Why did AJ just, I mean, it was a hard fought bot. And I know there was a guy with, with ring steel ring steps coming at him, but it just didn't. And Cody still hit him anyway. Yeah. I, I was, like I said, I just, I wasn't a big, you know, I just question marks all around. Um, uh, do we want to get into the Jade thing now? Okay. Were they really telling Cody the ring ropes were loose? I don't know. I don't know. Where if the ring did, ropes Somebody should, they should have told her too, right? Well, why didn't they tighten the damn things? No. Okay. That's yeah, where no. I got, that's where I got confused. If they were telling you in the first match, the ring works, but then Damian Priest got his leg caught. Was that, was that a work? That was in the main. Uh, so okay. it was an accident. But let's let's come to that last because I want to tangle that whole story in. But I do want to ask. Let's just get it. It was not Jade's. Like it was not her shining moment. So what? No, so I agree. What? All of a sudden, this woman is not good enough for WWE after having an AEW title for five hundred days. They thought she was good enough in AEW to have a title for five hundred days, but the minute she steps foot in WWE, everybody's like, "Well, she sucks." Okay, well, she was good I'm, enough over there. I'm going to play devil's advocate in the sense of I agree that even when she was there, I said she's green and she's got a lot to learn. Yes, she's green. She still does. And she still does in WWE. My my opinion has not changed of her. I said even in AEW, she looked like a megastar. She had a look that just that was you know off the charts for, for the talent. I thought they did the right thing putting her in the tag team. I think they look. By the way, I'm not the one that's beating her up about the match. I also sit there and go, some nights she just have a bad night at the office. And that's I think that's what that was. It just it wasn't her best moment and it happens. It was high unfortunately, risk. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes, it was a lot of high risk stuff, but unfortunately for her, it was on a PLE. That was just it. That that's why, you know, hey, it's unfortunate that it happens, but it does. 
We've seen it with a lot of talents, by the way. We've seen it with two guys get in the ring and they just don't have chemistry together and they just have a bad match. By the way, let's go Jimmy and Jey Uso. Remember that match? We all were just like, what the heck happened? Like that yeah. just, you just two assumed it was Jimmy and they're good great. Match. Correct. But so, it was a good match. Okay, I enjoyed that match. It was the only hometown hero match that they won. And those people in Scotland were cheering for their hometown people over the baby faces and heels. That was insane. Okay? That was really cool that they were doing that. That crowd was extremely loud. People in other countries still really, really get excited when they come to the shows. When WWE comes to them, they love that. They sell those shows out. They're loud and passionate fans. Like they're, I don't know what goes on at soccer games, but isn't that the way they're supposed to act at soccer games, where they soccer have chants and cheers? Yeah, yeah. Look, it's. I think we've talked about that in the past about how that the international markets have just opened the doors, and with those crowds, I think you're going to see more and more of that. Um, I was surprised by the tag title change. To be honest with you, I didn't think it yep. would happen. Uh, it was probably oh, the one match mind that I missed. Let it happen. Um, but. Okay, let's see what happens. Um, give me more. Um, but it's and it, again, Chad Gable, Sami Zayn match was okay. Uh, wasn't anything wrong with it. Progressed the it progressed the yes. Otis, you know, uh, the ascension of the whole family, and I think that's kind of cool. But look, of everything that happened on that card, one of the most polarizing things that happened: Drew McIntyre not winning. <laughs> Like the fans, there's, you know, video footage leaked out, you know, not leaked out, put on social media of Chan's fanning, you know, bullshit, 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 da, 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 whatever. Um, like a lot of people are like, see, this is what happens when you don't give the crowd what they want. And I'm like, well, A, that's not exactly what you do in the sense of the word. Um, because two things, and I'm going to ask you this, guys. I, I thought this was blatantly obvious. We, I mean, I, we discussed this last week. Like literally my prediction was what happened. CM Punk does something that cost him the match. Like, they're wrestling at SummerSlam. Like, literally, we, we know this is coming. The match doesn't need the title. But even more so, Myron, here's the question. Why in the world would people say Drew should win and they should wrestle for the title? Gunther won King of the Ring, and it said if he won King of the Ring, he would get a title shot at that title at SummerSlam. So if Drew wins, then Drew would be wrestling Gunther at SummerSlam, not CM Punk. And everybody wants, like, hey, we're going to see, are you going to make it a triple threat and water it down? No. So, again, I didn't understand, like, the blatant, obvious thing standing in front of you and staring you in the face, and yet you still thought you were getting something else. You don't just hand belts out. Belts are tools. If a storyline doesn't have just enough pop, you can throw a belt in and make it something special. CM Punk and Drew have storyline all day long. Drew and Drew and Drew and the whole storyline that he had with uh, the oh Jesus Christ, my brain just stopped again. That he had with uh, Judgment Day, Damian Priest and Judgment Day. That wasn't that good a storyline. That was a temporary storyline. That, that whole storyline was about getting a chance at the title so CM Punk could mess it up. So you could build more CM Punk heat. That was not about him getting a shot at the title or becoming champion. That was just a tool to advance the Drew and CM Punk storyline. It was the build, that, the angst that he has against CM Punk because he cost him again. It's like, it's literally that. That's what we were talking about last week. It's like, dude, this, why anybody thought that he was, look, by the way, hashtag you deserve it whatever you want to call it i'm not saying drew doesn't you know he if you told me he was going to win a championship all right i'm I'm not saying he's not worthy to be a champion i'm just telling you in this instance he didn't need it and by the way it gives you another match on SummerSlam, whether it's a money in the bank or it you know winner or whatever you're going to get gunther versus priest uh but we find out on raw seth rollins is wrestling you know, at Money in the Bank, he's wrestling Damian Priest. So SummerSlam could be Gunther and Seth Rollins. Who the hell knows? Well, and, and seriously, I didn't even know Seth Rollins was coming back. No you idea. Want to pop a crowd? And you know what? If you give people exactly what they want, people will quit watching. 
people want to see heat. AEW gives people what they des- what they deserve, and you know gives the crowd what they want. And people aren't watching anymore. There's a something to be said there. I mean. I, yeah, I, overall, though, top to bottom, I don't understand why they anger. I Look, I get it. Like, he wanted to see Drew win he, in his hometown. I understand. The home crowd's disappointed. I understand. But, again, my point was, it was it was plain as day staring you in the face last week. Like, what, I didn't, you know. Now, granted, there's a lot to be said for, well, it was so obvious. Let's, let's swerve them and, you know, do something else. Okay, I wouldn't have been mad. How about we see the follow-out in the story? Like, yes. but I just... Drew quitting on Raw. Like, that's your follow-up. Like, he quit. He's so angry, he quits. Now, who doesn't see, by the way, he quit Raw. Punk's going to be in Chicago, SmackDown this week. Do you, I got a gut feeling Drew McIntyre's at SmackDown and jumps him and, like, just tries to put a beat down on him, possibly. Could sounds happen. So, sounds so beautiful. Yeah. Just sounds so beautiful. And, you know, they had three hometown hero title matches. They gave them the least significant of the titles involved, the women's tag team title. They didn't give them the women's belt. They didn't give them the big men's belt. Yeah. Bailey and Piper had a phenomenal match. They showed exactly what Piper was capable of. Just a wonderful match. Bailey probably maybe top five women wrestlers of all time, in my opinion. But they didn't give the people their their hometown uh their hometown win because you're not going to tune in every time if they give you what you want i i just think the bailey move is not it wasn't the time to move off bailey to piper no uh, no matter how much we love and think how you know how highly we think of piper nevin it wasn't time yep. yet um like i said I've, i said out last week i would probably have moved chelsea green from a character standpoint than I would have Piper, which is not a knock on Piper. That's just all I such a fan of the Chelsea character. So the but, Chelsea character is killing you know, it right now. But look, speaking of character based and let's talk Ooh. about raw, Ooh. what everybody's okay. probably waiting okay. for us to discuss. What everybody is talking about, uh, Kenny from Burton, South Carolina. Um, is that anywhere near Heath? I don't know if that's near Heath or not. Um, mm-hmm. did you guys think the Wyatt six debut lived up the hype? Now, how are we going to spell six? Give me the give me the official spelling, Nick. It has something to do with S I C K. Whether that's a six or an S or an X, I don't know. Okay. But okay. it's the six. I love that, by the way. We'll get and to that I only in saw a five of them. Yep. So there's another one coming. Maybe. Maybe. Because okay. what if it's just if it's six S I C K, then that doesn't mean there's six. Or a, no. or does it? Lots of questions. Could be a wordplay. Yeah. And so we recognize the 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 five people we saw, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. Okay. Yeah, everybody, yeah. So is it better, less, or different than the original Wyatt family? Um, well, the problem was, I. For, let, let's first and foremost, my answer did it live up to the hype? Yes. I believe it did. Your take? Why? Why did we need it right now? Why why not save that for maybe if ratings drop off? Why not save that for, you know, a low time or when people aren't watching or, or during the 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 ratings, whatever the sweep. I, do they still have sweeps? But it's in the spring, I think. Okay. Why not save that for, for when you really needed it? And it's 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 so different, right? Wrestling's so different right now. It's so individually persona driven. And this is all this theatrical stuff comes back. So I'll answer your question with a question. What if wrestling is on an upswing and you don't get a downswing? What do you do? Just keep putting it off? Because you said, wait till the ratings, if you're in a lull or a drop, what if they just keep business keeps growing? Like how long can you push this off? I mean, you got to do, you got to pull the trigger on it at some point. You just do. And it's been long enough. I mean, let's be honest with you. Like some people were starting to get tired of the QR codes and the and the teas. I know. was I was tired of them the moment they started them. I'll be honest. Um, so I wasn't the biggest Wyatt family fan. Nothing against Bray. I thought Bray was an incredible talent, but the whole I thought maybe we were past the time where we needed those kind of gimmicks. Um, and now I don't see much use for this kind. Of, that's just me. 
I'm not, I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm not bashing what other people think. I just didn't think we needed this um, anymore. I didn't think we needed this kind of stuff. It's so different um, than than anything going on right now. So is it, is I mean, the hell, positive? they did the how ha- they did the Hardy compound. What the hell am I thinking? TNA did the Hardy compound the other week, and it was cool. Here I pop. Okay, well here I'm being a hypocrite. TNA's doing something and it's cool. WWE comes back with something and it's not cool. What am I? I? Listen, cinematically, I don't think they could have done anything better than what they pulled off. By the way, I want to throw in a little fun note. They've been working on that single shot with the cam where it walks for a while now, doing cool shots with it. Yeah. And now they use it in this. Like, how cool was that? That they did the, like, yeah. they see her, they walk backstage, they see... Look, I thought, like, cinematically, I literally, my reaction was like, is this a fever dream? Like, Chad Gable's yeah. dead? Or, you know, Gunther and Cody or Triple... Like, what, what, what are we doing here? Like, is this supposed to be... And I think that's kind of the fun. I think one thing that you specifically said that really jumps off the page for me, it's so different than anything else they're doing. It's going to make it yeah. special. Um, and, and, and look, I... I don't want to see them like a wrestling next week. I want to see some creepy, like it was funny. Rachel was watching it with me and she just went, why? Like why? And I just looked at her and go, (laughs) she's like, she didn't get it. She didn't like it. She didn't understand it. And I just looked at her and go, you know what that means? This is not for you segment. Like this is totally different. I thought Jay's reaction, by the way, on social media after adds to the mystique. I think if everybody gives them that kind of reaction, it builds them up a little bit. Like he's like, I want no part of this. Like keep me, you know, they can have the fireflies back. That's brace family. Dude, just take them back. I don't just keep away from me kind of thing. I I'd love, love social media integration. Yeah. Um, and I think ultimately look, does this last? I don't know how long this lasts. I understand the concept that they're trying to pay tribute to Bray and I respect that a lot. Um, but what I really want to see is what's next. Where do we go from here? And how do we eventually, eventually, look, Nikki Cross, uh, Dexter Loomis, Joe Gacy, Eric Werowin, and of course, Bo Dallas. That's five. Um, mm-hmm. There's like, what about Alexa Bliss? Is she going to be involved? Is she not? Think about it. They have us asking questions and wanting the answers. What about Braun Strowman? Yes, they have us asking questions. They've got us paying attention. They've got us doing something different. I hope it's not just a cash in. Okay, I hope it's just not a cash in because they don't seem like they're doing stuff like that anymore, or at least it feels positive more. But okay, you got my attention. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to see what you're doing. You work. It worked. You worked me, even though I didn't want to be. So, but it's an opinion, Nick. It's very it's, polarizing opinion. That is correct. But what do you do if you want to talk about your opinion? Listen, just like us, Myron, you can always go out and start your own podcast. If you if you really want to talk about it and like, hey, I don't agree, I disagree with you guys, awesome. Lipson.com, use the promo code TAPPED. You get up to two months for free. Again, Lipson.com, promo code TAPPED, and it will actually just not get you a couple months for free. Why? It's the easiest podcast platform out there. Uh, for me, I tell people all the time, it does all the distribution for you. It does everything you need. They can even handle some of your advertising and stuff in there for you. So Lipson.com, use the promo code TAPPED and get up to two months for free. You know, And it's a great way to support the podcast as well. Been very good to us. Company been very good to us. And, and Best one. I'll work. never go to anybody else. I, I, I've, like I said, lo- loyal to a fault at this point with them yep. probably. Yep, yep. Uh, loyal listener, Tony from Hyattsville, Maryland. Uh, that's right near where my uh, in-laws live. Um, do you guys think all of the open door, not forbidden door, because the door is not forbidden anymore. The, uh, stuff W the, the open door stuff WB is, is doing is hurting the novelty of AEW's forbidden door. What do you think? The door's not forbidden. It's not novel. Correct. You know? So if somebody, it's like, once again, Simpsons did it. Simpsons, it's just not, it's not special. Are, am I excited? Nah, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Did you watch TNA last night? Hell yeah, I'm excited. Nick, Joe Gacy, hey, or Joe, jo, jo, not Joe, Joe Hendry, NXT. Joe, yeah, so he's, yeah, I mean, Joe NXT Gacy last night was spectacular. Player. Whoops. 
Yes, NXT was awesome. And then you, then you had Kazarian in the Battle Royal eliminated three people. And then everybody's singing Joe Hendry, Joe Henry song. Okay? And then you have a social media post from Joe Hendry uh, doing that with uh, Shawn Michaels. I never expected things to be this neat. Then they acknowledge the, the person they sent to the TNA pay-per-view. And they show clips from the TNA pay-per-view. Okay? And then they acknowledge the NXT superstar lost on the TNA pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. And then the, they always are peppering in names like New Japan and all these other names of promotions during the NXT show and during the WWE shows. You never know who you're going to see. And then now they're letting they're letting guys work in other places. How cool is that? So what are the last quotes we heard? Where's AJ going now? AJ's going to Noah. He's going to wrestle in Noah. He's going to wrestle Mara Fuji there uh, July 13th. By the way, July 13th, EO Sky is going to be working at Marigold. So, like, two you know, two talents going to work Japan. Um, uh, I think, look, this is kind of a little mini tangent. I think this is probably, like, of a mini payback for AJ. We're not going to get into those details, but I think AJ, this is a favor to AJ maybe in some form or fashion. Letting him go back to New Japan, especially during the summer when maybe family can go, yeah. um, potentially. Uh, but the the amount of stuff that they're they're literally did we never thought we would see the WWE working with TNA involving the Indies like how you brought up the social media stuff. It was funny. I missed the fight that happened on NXT. Rachel just pointed out, she's like, oh my God, there's like this poor kid's cutting a promo. I had to look down because somebody had texted me and I looked down and she's like, oh my God, a fight broke out in the crowd. And I'm, she's like, I'm like, what? And I see all the commotion going on. I'm like, oh, I can miss what happened. And clearly you could tell like it affected the promo. And again, worth it. I'm thinking like, oh my God, something happened. Minutes later, somebody's like, nope, it's old Brooks Jensen's head popped out around the thing and he's involved. So, they're involving promotions like bullpen pro wrestling, you know, professional wrestling. He shows up there. So it's like the social media, Joe Hendry in the back with, yeah. you know, it's like, dude, it's just so many things that we just thought. I, it, So I got a text from a wrestler talking about something. And I, I, I'm trying to like very carefully word my words here to say, yeah, right. there are guys, you sh- there are things you, sh- that you used to be excited about. Like, oh, my God, it was a massive deal that it happened. I said, I, my response was, the landscape of professional wrestling has changed so much, literally in a few months, that the answer to your question Tony had, yeah, I think WWE is really hurting the novelty of a Forbidden Door pay-per-view when any given week now, a WWE talent, whether it's an NXT, WWE, like, could show up at an indie show, they could show up in Japan and wrestle, they can, you know, just the, the the endless potential and possibilities because I think the difference was, and I think this is where it all boils down to, Vince McMahon was so concerned about the brand of the WWE, he did not want anything else mentioned, anything talked about. And I think TKO doesn't give a, they just don't care. I almost said it. They, I don't think they care. They just really don't. I don't think they care at all. So Triple H is on the forefront of he cares about the health of pro wrestling. And he understands that means wrestling is better with a successful TNA. Wrestling is better with a successful indies. And he understands that, like, hey, we can all play along. Now, this is not my reaction. This is his. I think he probably sits there and goes, now those jerks over on the other channel, they want to be assholes about it, and they want to say things and do things and take shots at us. We'll let, we'll leave them out of the pool. They don't get to play in the sandbox with the rest of us. Well, you've got to the point where the people being negative are now the AEW people. Okay, now they're the people criticizing uh, people when they go to WWE. Now they're the people being negative, not the WB fans. Uh, you know what? I now I'm like, well, I got to get the bullprint pro wrestling because I never know when Brooks Jensen is going to turn up. Just because your dad owns a promotion, now that means a WWE star can show up. 
they took a kid that was on NXT and all of a sudden they made him the most interesting thing on, on wrestling news because he's showing up on social media and there people are tracing him. Like he's where's Waldo. People always want to know where, where he is right now. How cool is that? Yeah. Took and a they guy put Melon Henry on and she's all of a sudden super. Yeah. Super interesting. But they they took a guy that people thought they had given up on, yeah. And now he's he is one of the most in, you know intriguing characters on the show, which is kind of just super yeah. crazy when you even remotely think about it. So, yeah. but he's not the only intriguing character that we nope. had a question about this week. Nope. nope. Um, this question comes from Daryl Hall. Daryl Hall resides here in Georgia. Uh, a lot of people know him as Grandpa. Daryl Hall is not only the best referee in Georgia; been voted that five times. I would say Daryl Hall is the best referee not working for a major promotion in the country right now. Uh, not that we're biased or anything. Not that we're biased. Not, not that we're biased. Not that Daryl Hall is is a is a close personal friend um, and someone I I have the utmost respect for. And the fact that he sends questions and I'm honored to answer his question. Um, is Lexus King as over or less over? than Brian Pillman Jr. Well, Nick, this was a tough one. And I went back and I studied and I watched. And my question is, Daryl, who, to who is he more over? Is he more over to me and Nick and old people? Or is he more over to young people? Because guys like me and Nick see him. And we think he looks like a dreg a dreadnought, not like one of the original Zartan dreadnoughts, like right at the first of GI Joes. He's like the ones towards the end where the guy that rode the air skiff, and then there was that one that I guess his name was what was it War Pig that had the wooden or the big stick. Yes, one of the ones you don't know. He's like a shitty dreadnought from late period GI Joe, right before they started being living snakes over at Cobra. That look kills me. And I looked at his social media from before he got signed and he looked like a cool, like a neat guy. I looked at his AEW stuff before he had that dreadnought, dreadnought beard. And I thought he was cool back when he was Brian Pillman Jr. And guys like me and you thought about his dad and we could relate to his dad and that made him cooler. And, and now he's somebody something. different. What's that? And I like him now for the exact opposite of what you just said. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Because you said the exact thing that was true. When he was Brian Pillman Jr., I only thought about him as Brian Pillman's kid. It's a challenge I think a lot of second-generation talents face. And uh, it's a dilemma. I would love to know what fans think. Tappedoutpod.gmail.com and even talents, wrestlers, anything. If you have, you're a second generation wrestler, third generation wrestler, call it whatever. I think one of the challenges that you face is when you're Brian Pillman Jr. Hell, when you're Ben Buchanan or Zach Buchanan. Cody and, Rhodes. Uh, Cody, et cetera. Dustin Rhodes. Correct. It was one of the things that I, by the way, admired and liked like there wasn't a lot to like about Stardust and Gold Dust. <laughs> um, right? That's what everybody tries to tell you. I disagree. I love Gold Dust. See, my here's my point. I disagree when people say that. I think they they both handled the characters not the way they handled it, but in the long term it went two different ways. The obstacles of being like for somebody like Randy Orton, it kind of works. He was a second gen he was a third generation star, et cetera, et cetera. But it worked out for him. But guys like Dustin, when he started, he was Dusty's kid. I don't know. David Flair, he's Ric Flair's kid. Like the oh. unmeasurable, the, 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 the baggage that comes with that, sometimes you need to be separated from that. Like I, I to be Brian Pillman – because there's a problem with being Brian Pillman Jr. You know, and Brian Pillman's kid. And I, this is with all due respect. You are literally competing with the ghost 
of a mythical figure because the mystique of the the loose cannon Brian Pillman that he we lost him essentially in his peak you know when he was a, you know when he was you know, it's firing on all cylinders so i think the obstacles that junior faced he had to go away from that and become his own character his own identity the difference was here's the answer to the question in a long-winded way why do i think he's more over now why jesus how about cuz he's just on tv more often when he was in AEW he was floundering he was in and out. He, you'd see him, and then he wasn't there. He was in the tag team with Griff Garrison. Then he was, you know, it was just a clustered mess. He's over more now, Grandpa, because at least on every given week, we're under the assumption he's going to be on NXT television and he's going to be doing something, you know, like productive. Like he's he's involved in a story and he's at least moving forward. And I don't think in AEW I ever had the belief in that. So it wasn't necessarily the part about the dad and separating. I like the character better because it separates him from him a little bit. But I just think just the consistency being on a national television show consistently is why I think he's more over. Okay. You know what? That's that's about as good an answer as, as you know, and like I said, that's as good an answer as I've heard and I studied on this one. Uh, and I looked at it from my point of view because – to me, it looked like his gimmick was, I'm not Brian Pillman Jr. I'm not Brian yeah. Pillman's kid. And at least he wasn't gold dust. Thank you for that memory. You know, thank you. Thank you for that memory because that makes sense. Uh, but it's almost like they tried to wash away all of the Brian Pillman memories. But if I needed percent. something washed away, you know where I would turn? jmartinandcompany.com. That is correct. Our friends here on the you know the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast, there's only one person for all your pressure washing, window cleaning, gutter, knee, all that kind of stuff, not just residential, commercial as well. jmartinandcompany.com. Give you know look, check them out, give them a follow on Facebook, shoot them a message, get you scheduled up. I promise you, they're the only guys we use, the only team out there that we trust, not just with mine, but with my mother-in-laws, my families, my friends, everybody and anybody. If I need pressure washing, gutter cleans, window clean, all of that stuff, jmartinandcompany.com. Oh, yeah. Great guy. Great business. Uh, just don't let him around your uh, cruel spice. He'll buy all of it. That is great. Uh, yeah, I still hold that against you, Jay Martin. <laughs> okay. On to our next question. And this one is another opinionated question. Lawrence from Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Very East Coast so far today. Is it time for AEW to shell the old talent and go rebuild like NXT did? Well, you know, they started out as a company of alternatives. And then they hired a bunch of WWE talent and retirees. Now, I love what Edge is doing, but where's the future with Edge? Where's the future with Christian? How much longer do they have? How much longer do they have with, with Chris Jericho? Maybe developmental is not a bad idea for them. Um, here's the argument. I'll give you a funny story. As much as I think Chris Garrett Jericho, there are days I don't. I don't like seeing Chris Jericho in the ring as much as I used to. And I, I just said, leave it that. He's still better than most, but I don't like seeing him in the ring as much. But to his defense, I feel like he has tried and attempted to do more for the young talents there than most talents. I mean, he's you know he was he was working with Hook, he was working with Daniel Garcia, he's working with uh, you know Big Bill, like the Learning Tree stuff. So I think he always was trying to do that aspect of it. All that being said, mm -hmm. I think where they went wrong was exactly what you mentioned. When that company started, it was the alternative. It was being different. It was we were not the same company as WWE. I, I'm gonna try to. The ratings will come into this conversation, but I, I just think the vision of where they were and their growth and all that, um, twofold. One, they were an alternative. Two, I think the WWE was in a bad spot at the time, so they benefited from that. I think I don't think they took advantage of that. Uh, but history will show us, by the way, WWE, when WCW came in and started kicking their teeth in, what did WWE do? They kind of reset. They started making new stars. 
They made the Austins. They made the Rock. They made Triple H. They, you know, so they were look. They kind of pushed them up, and it took a, it took a minute. Yeah, there was. I made a case for there was probably six months to a year, more likely six months. Raw was better than Nitro, but Nitro was still winning. Yeah. And the ratings war. That could happen. And I think what we just saw recently, um, again, because of our recording schedule, everybody knows we're kind of like, we're discussing a week ago, literally a week ago, ratings. Uh, people are claiming NXT beat Dynamite. 718, 681. Yeah, they beat them. I'm going to be consistent here. That's a rounding error. That's yeah. a ratings thing. Like that's it. you could call it a. You could have told me it was a tie or one one and so forth. Or so overnight or things come back um, or blah blah blah. There's always um, something. There was an excuse. Uh, they were against the NBA as well. The finals. Uh, Dynamite was. So they had some heavy competition. It's different nights. They're not head to head. Correct. It's well, that's what. Nights. Well, that's what I meant. NXT wasn't against that. They weren't against the NBA finals. Dynamite was so there. There are factors into there, and if you're looking for excuses slash reasons, call it for whatever you want. That's not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say here, to be honest with you, there's no now. Cody Rhodes was on that NXT, by the way, so there was a lot of casual fans who probably tuned in that don't. But based on the number they got, the seven eighteen, it really wasn't. It's more, to me that rating was more damning on Dynamite and what they were up their their ability to handle the competition of the NBA Finals, which is a lot of competition. I understand, but I think what I'm trying to get at is on a week to week basis. In my personal opinion, and it's just my opinion, and you can disagree all you want. There is zero reason NXT even on different nights should be competitive with Dynamite when you look at those two rosters side by side. Yeah, and the money. The, the payroll yeah. is, is insane. The payroll difference is insane. And WB is saying we want to establish a third brand. They're establishing a third brand with a good program and a consistent storyline, high quality matches. And the fact that anybody could pop in, it's nothing for Cody Rhodes to show up on a show like that. You know, it's, it's nothing for somebody to pop in, you know, I mean, uh, Gallows and Anderson, they're, yeah. you know, they're on there. I mean, like I, the, the 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 take that I think is the weirdest one to have is I was watching. Did you ever think again? We talked about this a little me, me and you off air, like we were texting and stuff. Like, did we ever think we would see the day that we were like, do we have to watch NXT before we record? No, I never thought I'd see that coming because there were a lot of weeks where I just skipped it all together. Yeah, and because you know we record on Wednesday morning, and most Tuesday nights, you know, I watch most wrestling on DVR so I can skip the commercials and I can skip that lull in the middle where they, they, they have matches that typically aren't very good, mm -hmm. but they, they're getting to the point now that that lull on three hour shows is not what it used to be. Okay. Here's the pause to that question, Myron. They're doing it with talents. I've never heard of. Yeah. Like literally it was so funny. Cause uh, we were watching it and we were going to bed. So I turned it on literally laying in the bed, I was sitting there watching it, and Rachel just looked at the TV, and she asked me, this is a casual fan, by the way, and I mean the casualest of casual wrestling fans, she just was watching this show, and she goes, it's kind of tied into the conversation we had last week about talent and inter being interchangeable. She's like, oh, I've seen this girl wrestle before, and I'm like, no, you haven't. She goes, I swear she looks, and I'm like, yeah. That's what I mean. They literally are just, they, a lot of the talents look the same, They're, but here's, yeah. I never thought I saw a video package of a volleyball player. They've turned into a wrestler. Yeah. And you have to ask your brain. It's just like, dude, they're just cranking out character after character after character. And they're just trying it. And people are like, hey, they're hitting on some. Yeah. But it's like the the, the kid that won the, the battle royal. I was like, literally when he won, and I, by, I'm exaggerating here, but literally there's a part of me going like, who the heck is this kid? Yeah, like he's 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 come out of nowhere, and I know he hasn't, but you know what I'm you know what I mean. You know what I'm getting at. I'm just kind of like, guys are just like, dude, they're just guys that are essentially no like, and you're telling me that roster is mm -hmm. beating a be, even competitive. Let's be, it's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah, I'll say yeah. it. It's embarrassing. It's even competitive with a roster that has MJF, Adam Copeland, Brian Danielson. Blah, 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 blah. Insert every guy who's on the roster at AEW. 
I, it's just insane to me. But they're starting, I mean, for the most part, they're starting to look like a lot of WWE cast-offs. And I hate to say that, but it's like, remember when WCW just got old? I'm not talking about the, the programming. I'm talking about the talent just got old. And that's what's going to happen. If they don't develop more stars that they can put into high roster positions, they're going to be stuck with a bunch of senior citizens that just I, can't go anymore. Yeah, I just – and it, look, it's, this is the part about the ratings. Like, look, I don't know that we joke and say they couldn't get any worse. I guess theoretically they could – and I think a lot of the argument could be made of like, what's the commitment from Warner Brothers Discovery look like? I think we're going to touch on that a little bit in the next question, but I think that probably matters. Like, what kind of commitment do you have? And say, like, how much leeway are they going to give you that you can say, maybe it's time to just kind of reboot, reset, and try to make that next wave and not chase those. Use those talents. You have them. Use those talents to help. By the way, key thing we learned is something about from the, the Who Killed WCW thing. They need to elevate the young guys to their level. They don't need to go down to the level of the lower guys. It's a very important thing. They got to make sure they do yeah. and they handle it correctly. But yeah, anyway. That's what the, the older talent should be there to elevate the young guys, not bury them. Or you're going to wind up with a 5,000 man NWO roster with no other talent. And that's, that's not going to work, but, uh, we get this question, our next question. And this is, this is something I needed you to explain to me. And you went back and checked on, uh, uh had to clarify Allen spring Creek, Nevada. Our first, uh, our first Western question this week. What do you guys think about the Triller TV, the Triller TV deal where they get the AEW pay-per-view archives for purchase now, not stream, not like a WE network, which is now on Peacock. It's moving to uh, Netflix. Um, not to stream, but to purchase. Now, quote us some of those prices we found there. Well, that's the thing, because you talked about it's a, it's a, so Triller TV's kind of, it was the old Fight TV, which most people are, you know, you, they're used to that name. So the Triller kind of throws them off a little bit. Um, by the way, you can actually purchase. The current pay-per-views as well. So, like, the Forbidden Doors on there right now, you could purchase it for when it comes out, etc. Now, the archives work a little bit different in the sense of you can go in and, like, hey, I want to watch one. Like, I looked it up. I was just curious. Full Gear 2023. Like, what? It, what it, if I want to watch that, what is it? All right. Well, it's nine ninety nine for the one pay-per-view. By the way, the difference is, too, you have your account. When you purchase it, you own it. Like, it's not a streaming thing where, like, oh, if I cancel, you're not canceling a streaming service, and then I just don't have that access to that anymore. If you b buy it, it's nine ninety nine. You own it. You can watch it. It's kind of like if you bought it on the uh, the Apple Store. Like, it would be on your Apple account forever, so you could watch it whenever, theoretically. Don't don't get me started on my Sony sidebar. Um, <laughs> did you hear about that, the gaming no. thing? Apparently, Sony, listen, look, if, look, I'm not an expert on this. I read this article, thought it was interesting. If somebody out there is an expert on it, please let me know. Essentially, their argument was, hey, I bought this game, but then Sony didn't have the permanent lead, like the rights to it, so the game pulled the rights to it. So guess what you didn't have anymore? You didn't have the game anymore, even though you bought it, because you, anyway, something to that effect. Anyway, let's go back to the same conversation. I'm sure Kitchens is going to throw in his input, because I'm sure I ain't had a PlayStation about. since PlayStation 3. PCs yeah. just Ditto. seem to be Ditto. so much easier. So full gear, nine ninety nine. Hey, I bought it. Da, da, da. But it offers me an option that it was kind of cool. You could buy for twenty for fifty nine ninety nine the twenty twenty three pay per view package where all eight events AEW ran. You could just purchase them for one bundle price. And by the way, as the years went back, twenty twenty two there were five events. It was thirty four ninety nine. Twenty twenty one there were four events, so it was twenty nine ninety nine. So it's cheaper to buy the whole package for the entire year than it is just to buy the one event. And you would stone those. So have you ever went back and watched the WWE pay-per-view from a while back, like like an old WrestleMania from three or four years ago? I've watched the ancient WrestleManias. I've never watched like a, like a 36 or 37. 
the part to my purpose of watching the WWE Network would be the stream stuff I I haven't seen in forty years or 30, 35 years. Um, I I I see there's more value in that kind of stuff. But then again, what do we pay a month for the WWE, for the the Peacock? That's what, what I'm $10 saying. $10 a so, month. That's $120 a year. Correct. And I don't use Peacock for anything else, really. So there's the case to be made, right? You would just about right own it. Wouldn't matter. So uh, my question, though, it kind of went to a different at question, though. Everybody's talking about the Warner Brothers Discovery deal, the TV rights deal, and, you know, hey, does that get them on Max and the leverage? I'm like, does this give them a little leverage here? And go like, look, if you don't want to you know, work with us, we're going to make money over here and try to do this. I would think Warner Brothers Discovery want to try to keep everything in house. Make it look because if it's part of your TV rights deal and it's just part of the streaming deal, get it on their streaming service. Get it on the streaming service, yeah. That makes sense to me. So maybe who knows? Um, I, I, here's the thing though: I love that it's a step. They're starting to make business moves. They're starting to make moves that look more like a, a business than a hobby to me. So that's good. I think that's I really good. Uh, and our final question of the day, Benny from Memphis, Tennessee. What do you think it says about TNA and AEW that the Hardys are rumored to be working for TNA without a deal? Well, I think they're happy to be working mainly uh, and happy to be doing what they love and that I, I shit all over the, the Wyatt stuff and then i couldn't wait to tune in to see the hardy boy stuff because i went back and i bought the the youtube it was a dollar to add to my regular youtube membership because i get the premium youtube uh i added for a dollar i added tna so i get the tna show every week without having to add it to my cable package or my youtube tv package so it's worth it i'm not ready to buy their pay-per-views yet but now I get their show and I can watch it. And last week's was awesome because we went to the Hardy compound and the whole nine yards with all the kids and Reby and the whole Rebecca and senior Benjamin. Okay. I popped so big and I enjoyed it. Theatrical, not, I was a hypocrite about it, but Matt's doing what he wants to again. And he's having fun and Jeff's back. And maybe this is the start of something, but it's got to be preferable to what they were doing in AEW because they didn't resign. Were they? Were was a contract offered to them? Were they? Able oh to yeah, I believe they were. I believe they said they were. Um, I think ultimately, uh, what it boiled down to is obviously once Matt left and didn't resign, I think the they were just kind of like, okay, let's see what's out there. What what can we get? What can we do somewhere else? Um, I just it, here's the here's the kind of the irony, and I think this is a whole conversation for another show, maybe behind the paywall even about. I think it's luck of the draw. Everybody likes to say like WWE uses people better, AEW use you should like Ricochet should leave and go to AEW. They'll use him better. Okay, well they clearly didn't do that with the Hardys, and I'm not knocking that, that didn't happen. I just think it's every every person is going to fall into a different scenario yeah, it's where things happen. Lot. But I think what it boils down to at this point, um, we're going to be fair here. At the end, we were kind of like, Jeff Hardy shouldn't even be wrestling anymore. I hope and I pray that what this is leading to is they're on a handshake deal with TNA to work loose into this like this crossover promotion stuff with WWE so they can either do something in NXT. Um, like, hey. Who's to say what they're just hyping and building to their final showdown with something maybe with the Wyatt Six? The deletion. Maybe. I don't know. But that we're going to get the Mania, and we're going to get our final match with the Hardys. They're going to go in the Hall of Fame, and they're going to walk away. And they only have to work a few matches between now and then. Not a lot. Don't push Jeff too hard. And it keeps and Jeff it. out of the ring. This kind of stuff keeps Jeff out of the ring. You know, you you can shoot this, pre-shoot this stuff and maybe have a stunt guy doing Jeff stuff. 
Yeah, oh, that'll it, never happen. Jeff will never let that happen. Oh, okay. You're right. But still, we can we can cut back on the stunts and just have them wearing robes and stuff like Matt does. Uh, and it would be enjoyable. And then save Jeff for when we have to have him for the big stuff. Yeah. It would make I, me pop. It would, you know. Let's just say between SummerSlam and WrestleMania, Hall of Fame, all that kind of stuff, we'll get the last ride of the Hardys. And they ride off into the sunset. But did we that. ever get, did AEW ever do Edge and Christian versus the Hardy Boys? Well, no, they've been, uh, Copeland and Christian have been feuding the whole time, so they never got to it. That was just a waste. How big a waste yeah. was that? I mean, you know, but the argument could be made. We've seen it how many times do we do? It doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know. I, who knows? I mean, we'll see. Time will tell. Um, I, I'm curious to see where they go, but I'm hoping that this is the uh, – I, I think maybe they just wanted the flexibility. I don't know that it says – you can make it say whatever you want it to say, I guess, about AEW and TNA. I just think AEW didn't have a spot for them. They didn't have it. You know, it just didn't work out. I'm not crapping on them for the way they handled them. It just didn't work out. Uh, maybe they're just like, this is the opportunities to do what we want to do. We can cross over, get the NXT, TNA, WWE, blah, 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 Hall of Fame peace we're out you know kind of thing and they can walk away on their own terms so but you anyway. uh that's a long way away but you know what wouldn't be a long way away is if you were signed up on our youtube channel at youtube.com the handle there is at tapped out pod like that page subscribe to the page turn any notifications on become a member because this show literally as we record on wednesday you'd be getting it not on thursday on the normal release we always try to have it to you that you know a full day ahead but it is there. Patreon, same way. Patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. Get the show early and a little extra. And like I said, that new little show that I teased earlier in the show, that'll obviously be way there. I think I'm going to drop that like a week before uh, behind the paywall. But we understand, look, everybody's not a video person. Some people are audio. They just going to stick to their old favorites, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartMedia, etc. Make sure you subscribe. Give us a five-star rating and review. We greatly appreciate that. Because, look, audio podcast, look, it's, it's where we've been since day one, but that's kind of where we are. But look, look mm-hmm. YouTube is the wave of the future, and that's yep. Patreon as well. We greatly appreciate all you guys supporting oh, yeah. the show. Again, make sure you're supporting the sponsor, whether it's Dubby, jmartinandcompany.com, or if you want to like get into the mix as well, lipson.com, check them all out, oh, yeah. support the show. That's the best thing you can do to help us continue to bring the show every single week. And, and members who get the show a day early – Get the show that we're recording the day after the birthday of the world's greatest wrestling fan, the original crying wrestling fan, Dave Wills. Happy belated birthday to Dave Wills. Uh, thank you, Dave Wills, for everything you've done for us. Yes. Absolutely. Happy birthday, Dave. Uh, you know, great, great guy. Great, great guy. And uh, make sure if you ever see him, make sure you get a picture with him, shake his hand, and give That's him right. a give him a big hug. He reminds me of like an adult version of the little kid on uh, Jerry Maguire. Well, he's he's so tiny now. He's about the same size as that kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, absolutely. We love you, Dave. Man, uh, can't wait to see you soon down the road. Uh, anything else before we get out of here, buddy? No, nope. looking forward to Hardcore Hell on uh, on Saturday in Royston. Really enjoyed Shindig on Saturday in Monroe. Love indie wrestling, folks. Get out there and support it this weekend. That's Wherever right, man. You are. Well, what's the old saying, brother? If I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out.